So, last but not least, Daniel Pocock. He's going to talk about fundraising and crowdfunding for free RTC. Thanks, Anissa. So, who has given money to a crowdfunding campaign? Yes? So, okay. Why, why did you choose that campaign? Can anyone, would anyone like to share an example? Um, just grab the microphone from Anissa. Who, just put your hand up if you can give us an example. Anybody? Any volunteer? Yep. I've been giving money to a few open source communities on Open Collective. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you give an example of a community you donated to? Uh, Webpack, for okay. example, Babel. And um, why did you choose that donation? So, I mean, I, I'm one of the co-founders of Open Collective. So okay. <laughs> um, but also because um, I think it's important to sustain those open source communities. Because otherwise, right now, like they have to work during their free time in the evening, during the weekend, they burn out. Um, and so, right now, there is one person in Berlin working full time for Webpack, for example, mm -hmm. uh, paid by the community. And I think it's important that, as a community, we we should be able to work during daytime uh, to sustain the common infrastructure that all the startups that everybody is using really to create great products. Yeah, excellent. Can someone else give an example? Of something they donated to. Who else has given some given money to a campaign recently? Yeah, just grab the microphone and. I uh, donated uh, to uh, Triskill operating system and to KDE. Mm -hmm. And why did you choose to donate to these projects? Because they are, uh, in my mind, uh, essential for uh, uh, being able to work with uh, free software. Uh, you could also choose another operating system or uh, another uh, software manager, but uh, you need you need to have one. Excellent. So. Okay. So, how do? Can I ask you another question? Mm -hmm. How did you discover these crowdfunding campaigns? How did you learn that they were looking for money? Through their own websites. It's from their website? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Can, can anyone else give me another example? Anybody? Any volunteer? Okay, so we, we move on. Um, so who has used crowdfunding to raise money for a project? Yep, we've got one person, Xavier. Anybody else? Okay, if you want to take the microphone and... Yeah, so just tell us again, which platform did you raise money with? Um, it, it, it was not for a software project, mm -hmm. it was for a community uh, process together here for the city of Brussels, mm -hmm. um, but that is operating with the ethos of open source. Okay. Um, but it's hard, it's hard to raise money. <laughs> yes, it takes work, yeah. Okay, and did it work? Um, well, it's an ongoing thing to some extent, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, few lessons is, uh, Nobody wants to be the first, so at the beginning you need, like on Kickstarter, you need to find the first backers yourself mm -hmm. and really hustle for it, ask family and friends. Um, and then it's about um, yeah, always reaching out, giving updates and telling people like, uh, what do you need to use the money for? Yes, the communication is important. Yes. Okay. Um, so. Who earns a living here as a software developer? Yeah. And who, who is a developer of communication software? So things like SIP and Jabber. Okay. Um, so 
Do customers ask for features, the customers who pay, like businesses, do they ask for features like federation and peer-to-peer? -peer? So who, who, who wants to give me an answer? Yeah. Does someone want to take the microphone and give me a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just grab, grab. So I just want to ask a, a couple of questions about this. So... Yeah. No. No. So they don't ask for these features. Did you ever offer these features to one of the customers? No. no. Exactly. They they come to you and they tell you the things they need. Exactly. They, they yes. really don't care how you achieve this. Right? So they're often looking for the same features they have with a traditional phone system. Mm. So they're not thinking ahead to what, how the phone system's going to work in the future. They're just thinking about how they can recreate the phone systems we have today. That's correct. Yes, but over internet protocol. So, okay. Um, so do individuals, like private users of a telephone like ourselves, do we value the same features that those business customers look for. So just think about that for a minute. Um, who uses more than one service or more than one app for communication? So, yeah. And who has noticed that as one medium, say, SMS gets flooded with publicity material and advertising and messages from businesses that people start moving to another app or another technology for their personal communication with their friends. Has anybody noticed this trend? Yeah. So, so once the businesses get into any communication technology there's a kind of conflict there even if people will not say it explicitly, they gradually move to another platform. Um, and so there's a bit of a challenge here in the requirements of businesses and the things that businesses will support in crowdfunding and the things that private individuals want and are willing to support. Um, have you noticed that as time goes by, a lot of services that start without advertising gradually add more and more of it? So, so Twitter, for example, had very minimal advertising to begin with, but now it's everywhere on the site. Have people noticed that? Now, you know, WhatsApp is offering solutions for businesses to get into WhatsApp. So eventually people will move away from that to something else. Um, the big question is, will they move away from those things onto a free and open source solution or will they just move to another proprietary network? Will they just go from WhatsApp to Telegram or something else? Um, so, so the question is, oh, Zafir, do you want to take the microphone? Uh, just one note, uh, the phone systems and the SM and SMS uh, are actually a very good ex uh, an example of a federated system. It's yeah. not easy to get into that, but it is a federated system. And the uh, SMS system is uh, actually slightly newer than the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the traditional phone system is a good example of federation, but it has other serious failings, like there is no TLS encryption in the traditional ISDN style digital networks. Um, so on the one hand, they've been, become very widespread, but on the other hand, they don't have some of the other features of the internet. Um, so, so that's a really good example. Um, with, so just with this question of things that individuals want and things that businesses want, so businesses push individuals into other technologies. Uh, so if we're talking about a crowdfunding campaign, you know, do we offer things in that campaign that businesses will donate money to and also try to offer things to private individuals at the same time? That, that's, a, that's a challenging question. 
is the businesses can donate larger amounts of money, uh, but they will have different goals. They won't necessarily want to donate to a technology where they can't reach the consumers. Although then again, they might donate to common to things that are for the common good, like codecs or encryption systems that benefit everybody. So a lot of businesses in financial services are now asking for encryption. Um, and it's been insisted upon for anything they do over the internet. So that's something that is in common with end users. But they might not be keen on anonymity. So that doesn't protect you from sales calling and other problems. Um, so is anyone using crowdfunding for projects outside real-time communications? So Xavier, you had an... Um, I'm leader of a knee learning, sorry. I'm leader of a knee learning platform, a free software platform, and we've tried crowdfunding before, but actually we... I mean, in retrospect, we get less funding than the actual costs of organizing the, the crowdfunding campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not, not, not productive. We stopped doing that. Okay. So when you say that so you had financial costs or time costs or both? Um, mostly time costs. Uh, it's mostly the people working on the project, their time could be better invested in other, other efforts. Uh, again, in retrospect, you know, that seeing the results, then we could yeah, okay. definitely work on something else. Do you see there being possibilities if, if several projects work together on a campaign that they could collaborate to, to reduce that burden? I feel that the, uh, um, I'm not sure, um, but I feel that the issue is mostly that in open source and free software projects, we are uh, mostly the people who start the projects are really the the opposite of marketing people, and that you need to convince people to want to invest in your project, and that's very difficult f to do for us geeks. Uh, because, I mean, initially we're into non or less communicative behavior and we, we tend to underestimate our own work in some respects and so it's very difficult to sell it to others. Okay. Um, if you wanna... yeah, I'd, I'd love to react to that. Um, Yes, I mean, I, I agree. Like the, the problem of traditional crowdfunding platforms is that it's a one-off. So you spend a lot of energy to raise money once, and then all that energy is, is gone. Um, and so that's why on Open Collective, what we've been trying to do is uh, get people to do recurring donations so that at least like, they keep on going money. And then the other problem that is absolutely right, most open source projects are and, uh, doing what they do because they love coding, the last thing they want to do is, is what you explained. Um, and so, so what, what we did is we created this nonprofit, the Open Collective, from, um, the Open Source Collective, which is a 501c6 in the US. And all of the, now we have 460 open source communities on the, on the platform. And for example, some projects do have more people that are community driven. Um, and so for example, I, I think of Sean, Sean Larkin uh, doing the Webpack, which is a JavaScript bundler. He's been doing an incredible job at getting sponsors for Webpack. And so now they were able to pay someone full time to work on this. But what's interesting is there are companies like now Google, Microsoft, um, Facebook, and so on, uh, who give money to them. But because of that, now they're on the platform and they also can easily give money to other projects. Um, and so those other projects didn't have to do all of the, of the work. And so there is kind of a natural network effect that is happening to your question of actually coming together. Okay. I want to give another example of, of crowdfunding. Um, Anissa, can you grab the... So Anissa is from Open Labs in Albania, and they also organize a, an event. It's not as big as FOSTEM, um, but it's the biggest free software conference in the Balkans. So it's OSCAL. And when is OSCAL? 
Uh, well, uh, this edition is 1920 of May. Mm -hmm. So every year, what, what do you have to do to fund OSCAL? Um, well, um, in the beginning, we only were uh, waiting for sponsors and sending a lot of emails to, to receive sponsorship. And now we have our uh, Patreon campaign, and we're trying to crowdfund. Uh, crowd found. Okay. So mm -hmm. you mentioned Patreon. Yeah. And have you used this before? Well, not me personally, but in the hacker space, yes, everyone uses it. Okay, and what have they used it for? To, to receive money for the hacker space, to maintain it. Okay, and how is that being successful? Um, well, kind of, kind of. Okay, it's a start. Yes, it's a yeah. start. Yeah, so, and how much time do you have to put into the Open Labs hacker space Patreon? Uh, well, we have a specific team that uh, is working only with online infrastructure and I think they are putting a lot of effort and a lot of time on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a lot of competition there from different projects also looking for funding. Um, so this is another thing, is how do we deal with this competition for attention, the competition for funds? You know, people. People who give to Open Labs, for example, are they private individuals or businesses? Um, well, at Patreon, uh, so far we have had uh, individuals giving mm -hmm. uh, money for the hacker space since they have been in our conference or maybe in the hacker mm -hmm. space, and it's a place they love and they are connected to it. So, at, le at least I think they they give money because they like or love or enjoy yes. the place. But for your and event, for, for OSCAL... The, yeah, for the event, uh, it's uh, the opposite because we have uh, more sponsors than people that uh, get the, the money, that supporters, uh, ticket, sorry. So supporters these are ticket. like companies? Yeah. Yeah. So you've had experience both working with private individuals and with companies in yes. different campaigns? Yes. Yeah. So, so this is good. So, uh, yeah. We, we, we do actually the contrary, so what we do is we organize events that are uh, for a cost, so then you, you, you participate, it's not like open like FOSDEM, and, and well, we do also events like FOSDEM for our software in particular, but then we organize other more kind of professional events where we do workshops and we do conferences from uh, different use cases of our customers and and that uh, is actually something new that we launched two or three years ago and that is transforming itself into a revenue stream so it's uh, it's also I mean we've been inspired by uh, the Drupal con uh, conferences because they have like 3,000 visitors every year we have like a hundred uh, and and they're really I mean if you look at the accounts of the Drupal foundation I think it is uh, they have I think in the income eight hundred thousand dollars a year or something like that so it's very a very successful model uh, to finance the project but it's also very specific and I think it is bound to be specific to the kind of project that that is there but uh, because they have thousands of developers, professional developers uh, working with Drupal, so they have a lot of people interested in knowing the latest things about uh, this pro the project in specifically, and they have a lot of people, in particular in the U.S. of companies, sorry, in particular in the U.S., trying to find developers to work for them. So that is a very good uh, revenue stream for sponsor sponsoring because they have companies that want to promote there to be able to uh, have more developers so they're easily putting $10,000 or something like that just to have a, a boot there. Okay, so that's, that's a, a, all some great examples. Well, we're running out of time so I'm going to wrap things up here. but. Certainly anyone who's developing real-time communications in SIP, XMPP and other projects, if you're interested in looking at this as a fundraising source for your business, um, you know, feel free to contact me. Um, I'm reaching out to a few projects individually at the moment and looking at whether we can collaborate on a campaign 
to reduce the overheads to do some of the marketing and publicity together um, because that reduces the amount of time that each individual project has to put in um, and it can also help us to achieve a larger financial goal overall. Um, so I look forward to speaking to you afterwards. Thank you for coming to FOSTEM and I hope to see you next time. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Daniel. Yeah.